InvestorIdeas.com podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. In today's podcast, we're going to be looking at a few public company announcements from Village Farms International Incorporated, trading on the TSX as VFF and the NASDAQ as VFF, Mercer Park Brand Acquisition Corp, trading on the NEO as BRND.A.U and EOTCQX as MRCQF, Canopy Growth Corporation trading on the NASDAQ as CGC and the TSX as WEED, as well as private company Cartel Blue Incorporated. And as well today, happy Canada Day. And if you are in Canada, I'm sure you're very appreciative of a lot of the restrictions being laid back. If you're in BC and Alberta, this means you are now mask free or mask optional, um, which is a great step forward for Canada to get back to somewhat normal business and somewhat normal functionality of life. So I'm sure many of you today are, if you're in Canada, will be enjoying your Canada Day mask free potentially. Uh, so starting today with Village Farms International Incorporated, who announced its wholly owned subsidiary Pure Sun Farms, Canada's premier cannabis cultivator and brand, has received from Health Canada an amendment to the cultivation license for its 1.1 million square foot Delta II greenhouse facility, permitting Pure Sun Farms to cultivate cannabis immediately in the half of the Delta II facility for which conservation, for which conversion to cannabis production has been completed. And under the license amendment, Pure Sun Farms is also permitted to begin cannabis production in the remaining half of the Delta II facility when conversion of that half of the facility for cannabis production has been completed. So the amendment to the Delta II cultivation license immediately increases Pure Sun Farms' total co cultivation capacity to 1.65 million square feet, all of which is at a single location in Delta BC. And Pure Sun Farms expect to begin planting in the completed half of the Delta II facility in September of this year, with the first harvest expected in November of this year. As many licensed producers in Canada scale back operations, we're proud and excited to be significantly expanding production to meet the expected continued growth in Pearson Farms retail branded sales, driven by Pearson Farms leading brand market share in dried flour against the backdrop of the overall growth in the Canadian market, as well as additional opportunities we're pursuing both within Canada and in the international markets, said Michael DeGiglio, CEO of Village Farms. Now, Pure Sun Farms has delivered three consecutive quarters of 20% or greater growth in retail branded sales, and during the first two months of the second quarter of 2021 was once again the top-selling brand of dried cannabis in Canada's largest provincial market, as it's been in every quarter since it launched in the retail branded products in the fourth quarter of 2021. So, Pure Sun Farms... Um, Again, they kind of mentioned that they're somewhat going against the curve in an expansion of their facilities cultivation abilities when you are seeing a lot of the larger scale producers uh, basically roll back as much as they can as they're trying to cut costs, become more efficient, etc. And this really does show, again, sort of the differences between several models as far as production capacity within the Canadian market. Pure Sun Farms, again, I've mentioned a bunch of times as a very successful and smart strategy for how to deal with the dried flower market. Again, they were one of the first companies to focus on bulk ounce formats. They were one of the first companies to focus on lower price formats and not to try to um, keep competing in this same homogenized space of saying that you're a premium craft cultivator. Unfortunately, everyone has that same, again, branding and marketing strategy. So to try and say that you are premium and craft, the only way that consumers are going to know that is by trying your products. And many of these products do not actually meet the standards of what we would expect premium and craft cannabis to be. Um, so again, we've seen a lot of companies struggle to try and stay within that medium price and top tier price point for Pure Sun Farms. They focused on what they were successful at and what they can compete with aggressively, and they've done really well in the markets that they're in um, and have established themselves as a really high selling successful brand. And obviously that's telling into their adding to the produ production capacity. So I do think that this very much is a testament to the Pure Sun Farms model as far as cultivation strategies. Um, and obviously, I would expect them to continue to start pumping out different strains and different options as they expand their cultivation abilities. So definitely is a, is a good sign of where Pure Sun Farms is at. And it does show as well for medium to small growers, um, some of the advantages to having that sort of business model versus trying to be one of these large scale producers um, with massive facilities all over Canada. It really didn't pan out for many of these companies. Pure Sun Farms does have a large facility, but it's all in one area. Um, just being managed by this one company. So I do think that they obviously have focused on what they can do successfully in that area and have been quite successful moving forward. 
Looking next at GH Group Incorporated, which is one of the fastest growing vertically integrated cannabis and hemp companies in the U.S., who announced the completion of its business combination with Mercer Park Brand Acquisition Corp., a special purpose acquisition company to create Glass House Brands Incorporated with the intent to focus on branded product businesses in cannabis and or cannabis adjacent industries. And the subordinate restricted and limited voting shares and warrants of Glass House are approved for listing on the NEO exchange under the ticker symbols glass.a.u and glass.wt.u respectively, and they will begin trading on July 5th of this year. With one of the strongest retail and wholesale networks in our industry combined with best-in-class cultivation processes and our scaled and highly efficient cost structure, we are exceptionally well positioned to capitalize on the growing statewide and national consumer packaged goods opportunity, said Kyle Kazan, the Glasshouse Chairman and CEO. And we look forward to leveraging our leadership position in California to introduce high-quality, sustainably grown craft cannabis to the market to support the health and enjoyment of our consumers, as well as our environment and our community. Uh, so you've got a uh, brand acquisition company joining with a large vertically integrated cannabis and hemp company, um, again, going to be focused on branded products for cannabis businesses and cannabis adjacent industries. I would expect them to also be uh, looking at cannabis accessories, et cetera. Um, I do think that this is a smart combination of companies and sort of abilities and having a company that's obviously well focused on special purpose acquisitions and branding, uh, joining with, again, a vertically integrated cannabis company. I don't know how fast they'll be able to get products to market, um, but I do think that this will be an interesting thing to be launched in California specifically to see how well they can do in that market. That is the biggest hurdle when you're looking at the California industry is to really make your brand stand out as it's such a competitive market. Now, obviously, some companies, um, for instance, when we did our interview recently with uh, the Good Stuff Beverage Company based out of California, there are a lot of opportunities for branding if you are a unique niche business and if you know how to operate within the California market. Um, so obviously, hopefully, the GH Group combination with Mercer Grand Acquisition uh, would lead to them being able to understand how to build up their brand within the California market, which would hopefully extend into other states, as we've seen with many California brands in the past. But again, still a very competitive and aggressive market in California. Uh, next, David Culver, the Vice President of Global Government Relations at Canopy Growth Corporation, issued the following statement regarding Mexico's Supreme Court striking down laws which criminalize the recreational use of cannabis. Canopy Growth applauds Mexico's Supreme Court for striking down the prohibition on recreational adult use cannabis. This landmark decision paves the way for Mexico to end injustices caused by the criminalization of cannabis. And Canopy also joins the court in urging Mexico's lawmakers to finalize and pass legislation that provides legal certainty and establishes a responsible, constructive cannabis marketplace. So in an 8-3 to three ruling on Monday, Mexico's Supreme Court declared unconstitutional the prohibition of recreational marijuana use in Mexico, clearing a path to legalization. Now, Mexico's lower house passed a legalization bill back in March, um, but was still awaiting legislative approval in the gridlock Senate and the decision court ruling clearing legal obstacles could push lawmakers to finalize the legislation. Today is a ho historic day for liberties, Court President Arturo Zeld Zeldivar said in the video after the ruling, and the right to free development of the personality is consolidated in the case of recreational use of marijuana. Now, continuing along that trend with Mexico pushing towards legalization, uh, Cartel Blue Incorporated, a Delaware corporation founded in 1998, announced that it will increase its business operations in Mexico for expansion of its product lines. Now, Cartel Inc. Announced, announced expanded product strategies after the Supreme Court of Mexico ruled for decriminalization and legalization of recreational cannabis and hemp. And addressing its expansion strategy, the company previously attained trademarks in Mexico, which were approved. And all the company's products and processes, including cartel accessories, hemp cultivation, and approval of its line of hemp hip-hop clothing sold under the brand Cartel Blue, are part of this implementation. And it has secured purchase orders for pre-rolled premium mini hemp cigars for August 1st of 2021, delivered under the Mexico licensing guidelines. And Cartel Blue Inc. is the first and only hemp apparel company listed on a the major marijuana hemp stock index. And as the move into Mexico and the planned move into the countries are anticipated, it's determined that Cartel Inc. management to early uh, management earlier make a name change which aligns with the global branding strategy for its products. Now, this announcement coincides with the arrangement agreement between Cartel Inc. and Maui Third Wave. 
um, to purchase Haina organic hemp grown in the rich volcanic soil of the island. Now, this agreement marks a significant date in the history of Cartel Inc., as it will be producing quality mini hemp cigars packaged for immediate sales in Hawaii, the mainland, and through the newly announced chain of Cartel Cigar Lounges in selected hotels and special, specified venues. In Nashville, Tennessee, will be home of the very first Cartel Cigar Lounge, which will be owned and operated by a licensing agreement between Cartel Inc. and Music City Botanicals of Nashville. And further information is available through the investor relations at Cartel Incorporated. Um, so again, when you're looking at the Mexico market, there's a lot of anticipation about that. Um, that is going to be one of the largest legal cannabis markets in the world once activated. There's a lot of expectations there. There's a lot of companies, including Canopy Growth and many of the large scale producers who are looking at international markets who are quite poised to jump into that market as aggressively as possible as soon as available. I've talked a lot and just yesterday about Chiron Life Sciences and a few of the Latin American cannabis producers who are also eyeing Mexico quite aggressively and again are pretty much set up to launch products into that market almost immediately as soon as um, regulations will allow. And I do think that in general, you're going to see uh, very much Mexico become sort of the linchpin for globalization of the cannabis industry. It's one of the biggest factors holding back the global side of this industry is the fact that there is still a large scale illegal weed trade coming from actual cartel in Mexico. And obviously, that's going to always be a hurdle and a challenge when you're looking at how this industry becomes legitimized in the eyes of the global community. So I do think that once Mexico uh, does allow for legalization, once you see the changes from the legal market in Mexico and how that impacts their culture, how that impacts their economy, how that impacts the, the many sides uh, that have been damaged from the illegal trade in Mexico, I do think that other countries, especially in Latin America and other parts of the world, will start looking at that as the model to follow. And hopefully you might see a big wave of legalization in countries such as the EU um, and other parts of the world. And I'm very much uh, anticipating that as I do think that there's a lot of momentum and a lot of eyes on the Mexico cannabis market moving forward throughout the year. That's all for today's podcast. And once again, enjoy your, the rest of your Canada Day, hopefully mask free. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.